He felt the rough surface of the macadam under his fingers, and a thin sheet of cold water flowing around them. He saw himself getting up and backing away, and that's when a voice, a perfectly reasonable and rather pleasant voice, spoke to him from inside the sewer drain, storm drain. Hiya, Georgie, it said. Georgie blinked and looked back, back again. He could barely credit what he was, what he saw. It was like something from a made-up story or a movie where you know the animals will talk and dance. If he had been ten years older, he wouldn't believe what he was seeing. But he wasn't sixteen. He was six. There was a clown in the storm drain. The light in there was far from good, but it was good enough that so that Georgie Denborough was sure that what he was seeing. It was a clown, like in the circus or on TV. In fact, he looked like a cross between Bozo and Clarabel, who talked by honking his. Or was it a her? Georgie was never sure of the gender horn on Howdy Doody Saturday mornings. Buffalo Bob was the only one who could understand Clarabel. And that always cracked Georgie up. The face of the clown in the storm drain was white. There was funny tufts of red hair on either side of his bald head. And there was a big smile painted over his mouth. If Georgie, if Georgie had been inhabiting a year later, a lady year, he would have surely thought of Ronald McDonald before Bozo or Clarabelle. The clown held up a bunch of balloons, all colors like glorious ripe fruit in one hand, and in the other, he held Georgie's newspaper boat. Watch your boat, Georgie, the clown smiled. Georgie smiled back. He couldn't help it. It was the kind of smile you just had to answer. I sure do, he said. The clown laughed. I sure do. That's good. That's very good. And how about a balloon? Well, sure, he reached for and he drew his hand back reluctantly. I'm not supposed to take stuff from strangers, but Dad said so. Very wise of your dad, the clown said in the storm drain, smiling. How? Georgie wondered. Could I have thought his eyes were yellow? There were a bright, dancing blue, the color of his mother's, and Bill's. Very wise indeed. Therefore, I will introduce myself. I, Georgie, am Mr. Bob Gray, also known as Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Pennywise? Meet Georgie. Georgie, Denborough, meet Pennywise. And now, we know each other. I'm not ye I'm not a stranger to you, and you're not a stranger to me. Correct? Georgie giggled. I guess so. He reaches again, and draws his hand back again. How'd you get down there? Storm blew me away, Pennywise the Dancing Clown said, and blew the whole circus away. He could smell the circus, can't you, Georgie? Georgie leaned forward. Suddenly he could smell peanuts, hot roasted peanuts and vinegar, the white kind you put on your french fries through a hole in the cap. He could also smell cotton candy and frying doughboys, and the faint but thunderous odor of wild animal shit. He could smell the cheery aroma of the midway sawdust, and yet, and yet under it all was the smell of flood and the decaying leaves and dark storm drain shadows. The smell was wet and rotten, cellar smell. But the other smells were stronger. You can't. You bet I can," he said. "Watch your boat, Georgie." Pennywise asked. I only ask myself, <clears throat> I only repeat myself because you really don't seem that eager. He held it up, smiling. He was wearing a baggy silt, silk suit with giant big yellow bu buttons, <clears throat> giant big orange buttons, a bright top electric blue flopped down his front, and on his hands were big white gloves like the one Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck always wore. Yeah, sure, Georgie said, looking into the storm drain. And a balloon? I've got red, green, yellow, and blue. Do they float? Float? The clown widened, grinned, grinned wide. Oh, yes. Indeed they do. They float. And those cotton candy. Georgie reached, 
The clown seized his arm, and Georgie saw the clown's change, face change. And what he saw then was horrible enough to make his worst imaginings in the cell and the thing in the cellar look like sweet dreams. What he saw destroyed his sanity in one clawing stroke. They flopped. The thing in the drain crooned and cloaked. Clack cackling voice. It held Georgie's arm in his thick and wormy grip. It pulled Georgie towards the terrible darkness where the water rushed and roared and bellowed and it bore its cargo of storm debris toward the sea. Georgie craned his head, his neck away from the final blackness and began to scream into the rain. To scream mindlessly into the white autumn sky which covered above, which covered above Derry on the day in the fall of 1957. His screams were shrill and piercing, and all up and down Witcham Street people came to their windows or bolted out of their porches. They float, it growled. They float, Georgie, and when you're down here, you'll float too. Georgie's shoulders shocked against the concrete of the curb, and Dave Gardner, who had stayed home from his job at the shoe boat that day because of the flood, saw only the, a small boy in a yellow rain slicker. A small boy who was screaming and writhing in the gutter, with muddy water surfacing, surfing over his face and making his screams sound bubbly. Everything floats down here, that cackling rotten voice whispered and suddenly there was a ripping sound and a fleeting sheet of ag agony and Georgie D Denborough knew no more. David Gardner was the first to get there, and although he had arrived only 55, 45 seconds after the first scream, Georgie Denver was already dead. Gardner grabbed him by the back of his slicker and pulled him into the street and began to scream himself. As Georgie's body turned over in his hands, the left side of Georgie's slicker was now bright red, blood flowing from into the storm drain from the tattered hole where the left arm had been. A daub of bone, horribly bright, peeked through the torn cloth. The boy's eyes stared up into the white sky as David staggered away toward the others, already rolling pell-mell down the street. They began to fill up with rain.